finish him. What the? Ugh. Well, much like we saw last week in it. Flawless victory. These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. Hey there, I'm the Social Injustice Warrior, Vean Fuso. And today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite missed opportunities in wrestling. We're talking about a man of many names, a man of many gimmicks, none of them good, Lord Tensai. Or as he's known in some circles, Albert. Or Prince Albert. Or A-Train. Or the Hip Hop Hippo. You get the point. Albert had spent 1999 to 2004 working for the WWE. Where truthfully his time there wasn't entirely forgettable. But also wasn't really all that memorable either. So it's a really gray area. His tenure there made him seem less like a wrestler. And more like an accessory. As he was always labeled the other man in some form of team or stable. He entered the company as Draws' personal piercer. Hence the name Prince Albert. Get it? Get it? After losing his royalty, he teamed up with Test in a team called TNA. Get it? Get it? He then joined the group X Factor, where he'd be known as the third man in a team of three. Just behind X-Pac and Just Incredible. Just Incredible. Get it? Get it? After the Assembled disassembled, who redubbed him the Hip Hop Hippo? As a term of endearment. And really, this team and Albert in the team was just a placement holder for Grandmaster Sexay or Rikishi. He'd become A-Train, where he'd be in a forgettable big man stable with the Big Show. And the highlight of their time together was jobbing to the dead man at WrestleMania. Something I believe we've already covered on this channel. Albert would then head back to Japan from 2005 to 2012, competing in AJPW and NJPW, where he'd redefine himself as Giant Bernard. A force that was not to be reckoned with. And it was during this run in his career that I became a fan. I mean, I liked Albert as much as the next guy. Which, you know, wasn't really a lot. But I also didn't dislike him either. I just, you know, he was just kind of there. Didn't really have a feeling on him. Just kind of existed. He, 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 was, he, he was there, but not enough to make an impression. I mean, the guy could be funny when you gave him a chance. He could be intimidating when he needed to be, but he wasn't really given anything noteworthy to do. In Japan, his work either improved exponentially, or more of a spotlight was put on him to highlight how good he truly was. Which one of these things it was, I still to this day can't really determine. I, I go back and forth with this. But then it came time in 2011 or 2012, might have been 2012, pretty sure it was 2012, for him to come back home to the WWE where he'd be rebranded Lord Tensai. And I remember getting really hyped when I saw these promos, like these vignettes that would air. And yes, guys, I said vignettes properly. I know it's not vignette. It's a fucking joke, goddammit. You disappoint me. I remember getting really hyped when I saw these vignettes because I immediately knew who it was for, and I immediately knew that it was going to be great. This guy just came off a monster run in Japan. I was looking forward to seeing WWE duplicate this. Upon his re-debut in the company, he went through what every big man goes through, and that is a winning streak. I mean, not a lot of thought is put into that kind of gimmick, but you know what? It's effective nonetheless. I remember a friend of mine telling me at the time that his gimmick would never get over. It was too uh, gimmicky. And me, being who I was, I disagreed. Not because I didn't actually agree with him, but because I desperately didn't want to. He was a dominant force in Japan. Why would he be any different here? I said. And if I could go back in time and chat with my younger, more naive, starry-eyed self, I'd say, because of WWE, you idiot, they could be handed bars of gold and somehow process it into bags of dog shit. Now, I'm not saying they can't make a star, or at least maintain one. I mean, look at guys like Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, CM Punk, AJ Styles, the list goes on and on. But they're also the same people who missed opportunities with Brent Albright, Cody Rhodes, my buddy Dano, Christian, R-Truth, Bray Wyatt, Dolph Ziggler, and Sean O'Hare, just to name some. And I will never not mention Sean O'Hare. How do you have him on your roster and you don't make him a star? How does that happen? How does that happen? How you do it? I, I, you had to deliberately look past a very big man with a good threshold of talent many a times.
The issue with this run was his gimmick. First of all, he wasn't Japanese. You know, not that that stopped WWE before. That's right, I'm looking at Yuri Honda looking ass, Yokozuna. I'm on to you. You're a Samoan man and you know it. I know some of you are going to write in the comments, but V, they didn't say he was Japanese. They just acknowledged he was in Japan. And you're not wrong. But the thing is, they did kind of lightly imply that he was. The markings on his face, the, the Fu Manchu, I, don't, don't act like they weren't trying to get one over on you. And not only did he not resemble a Japanese man, he didn't even resemble a wrestler. Lord Tensai didn't look like you'd find him in a WWE 2K game. He looked like a character you'd find in the next Mortal Kombat. And that goes double for his finisher. I mean, come on, what? Really? Really? That's what you're going to give the guy? Mist in the hand and then a claw? What benefit does the mist have? Unless you're melting your opponent's face off, don't do it. And even if you were to do that, I don't, I don't think that's legal. You probably shouldn't do it. Don't do it. On top of that, the audience didn't take a liking to this character. Not that they even gave the gimmick a chance. From his debut through his mini-streak, the WWE Universe, as it's known, went out of their way to very audibly chant Albert and A-Train at him during matches. These are the same brilliant people who screamed Husky Harris during Bray Wyatt promos and shouted Brian Danielson when Daniel Bryan debuted. We get it, you're not a goldfish. Congratulations, you can remember things over 25 seconds old. Of course the gimmick wouldn't last. He'd go from jobbing dudes out to being jobbed out himself. He went from beating John Cena BEAT UP JOHN CENA to losing to Kofi Kingston. Now, no disrespect to Kofi, but that's kind of a downgrade. Mind you, this is also a pre-New Day Kofi Kingston. Not long after his winning streak transitioned into a losing streak, he was soon taking part in comedy segments, wearing lingerie, dancing with Brodus Clay, and now calling himself Sweet Tea. It was a sad end for a career that could have prospered given a better creative direction. But at the end of the day, wrestling is a business. And like anything else, is about making money. And Matt Bloom, the guy who performed the gimmick, still has a job. And solid paychecks headed his way as he trains the NXT roster. So I guess there's far worse fates in the wrestling industry. So with that being said, I'm the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso, and if you like the words that came out of my mouth hole, and you too want to become a VTard, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more where this video came from. Follow me on Twitter because, hell, why not? It's not considered stalking if it's on the internet, am I right? And don't forget to join the Discord. I don't have anything catchy to add to that, but just, j just join it. Just go, go do it. And if you have a free moment of time and a free dollar to spare, then head over to my Patreon, where for just one buck, you too could help keep this boat afloat. And if you don't have that dollar, but you do have a free moment of time, then hit the share button. It will help me out tremendously. Vitart, oh.